Hey guys and welcome to Hey guys and welcome to episode 2 of Video Game Pickups where I'll be showing you everything that I picked up during February. So the first things I picked up I picked up on February 1st. Starting off early. It was at a flea market. A hall full of vendors. The first one I came across had some Game Boy stuff. So I picked up these three bags right here. Let's see what's inside. In the first pack there was a regular old Game Boy Advance SP. The grey one with this charger. In the second bag there was a black Game Boy Advance SP. Actually in pretty good condition considering. And a Game Boy Color Link cable for some reason. I can transfer my Pokemans. And then the third bag. It's got the games. There were a total of 13 games in the bag. So the regular Game Boy ones was Super Mario Land, Smurf, Kirby Stream Land, and Pokemon Red Version. The only one I didn't have. The Game Boy Color games, Scooby Doo Classic Creep Capers. I have no idea. Pokemon Silver. And Pokemon Gold. So many Pokemans. And then the Game Boy Advance games. A Boog Lake version of the Scorpion King. Whatever. Brother Bear. Wario <laughs> Land 4. Super Mario Advance. And Super Mario World. Which is Super Mario Advance 2. And last but not least. Metroid Fusion. Love Metroid. At the next vendor, I picked up five PlayStation 3 games Platinum version of Battlefield Bad Company, Platinum version of Heavenly Sword, Platinum version of Resistance Fall of Man, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Vegas, and the Platinum version of Uncharted Drake's Fortune. I forget to tell you guys the prices. God damn! Stop, stop. For the Game Boy Light you saw before, I paid about $9, which is pretty sweet for about 13 games and 2 Game Boy Advance SP systems and various other stuff. For the 5 PS3 games, I paid about $15, which is not too bad. At the third vendor, I got a bag oh, of other goodies. That's not the right bag. This is the right bag. At the third vendor, I picked up GTA. Vice City Stories on PS2 and Animal Crossing Let's Go to the City on the Wii And wouldn't you know, more Game Boy stuff Once again this month, a tribal Game Boy Advance SP in a nifty little Pokemon Emerald bag thing And of course some games, all in these bags for some reason The first one, once again, a bootleg Harry Potter and the Prison of Azkaban I don't care about them bootlegs. Oh yeah, of course also the charger for the Game Boy Advance SP and a third party link cable. Back to the games. Duel Master Senpai Legends with his manual. Rayman Advance. Can you even see these? Because they're in these bags. But Rayman Advance also with his manual. And Pokemon Emerald version. Once again with his manual. And for all the things in this bag I paid what, $13 or so? It's, it's pretty alright. And that was all for that flea market. A few days later, on February 4th, I received some games in the mail that I had totally forgotten that I like bid on everything a guy had on an online auction. So I pretty much just got the scraps, but eh, whatever. Got these four PS1 games. And as I said, nothing spectacular at all. I paid like one and a half dollars for each of these, so it's not like I'm breaking the bank because of it. The first one, the Dalmatians. I'm sure that that certain British YouTuber I was talking about in the previous video would love this. But for some reason it does have the front cover and the, ma and the manual and everything. But the actual cover is for a game called Micromaniacs. I don't know. And also, Micromaniacs in his right box, which is weird. I'm just saying. Barbie Super Sports. 
and Platinum version of Tomb Raider. I would have to say that this is probably the best game in, in that lot right there. Two days later on February 6th, 6th, I was talking to this girl on Facebook that had some PS3 games. Now see, I paid a little bit more for these than I would like to, but it's pretty much all good games. So I paid about $37 for all of these. The Walking Dead, Rage, Metro Last Light, Final Hallway 13, Dead Island Riptide, Special Edition, and for me personally, the best pickup in this lot, Silent Hill HD Collection for the PS3 right here. Love Silent Hill! How much time is there left on this? I don't know. Be right back. Sorry about that. No more space. Where were we? Oh yeah. Games. Later on the 6th. Why can't I say that? Later on the 6th. <laughs> February 6th. 2015. Copyright. More PS3 games. These are paid about a buck and a half for each. Starhawk, Motorstorm Pacific Rift, Motorstorm Apocalypse, the Essentials version of Heavenly Saw. Got two different versions of it now. Mm -hmm. Infamous. I've never played one of these games, but I always wanted to try them out, so. Yay! And Ico, 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 however that's pronounced, and Shadow of the Colossus, Classic HD. That's what it says right here, anyway. So HD remasters, or however you pronounce that, and Shadow of the Colossus, which is pretty sweet. So on February 9th, I went to the local thrift store. They usually don't have anything at all, but this time they did. Nothing spectacular though, but. 007 Agent Under Fire on the PS2, MTV Music Generator 2, and it features the full video of Gorillaz Clint Eastwood. And this game might seem a bit weird for me to pick up, but NCAA March Madness 07. Now see, this is an American game and I live in Europe, so it's very rare for me to actually come across anything from the US, so whenever I do, pretty much just pick it up. For these three games I paid a buck and a half total. So you can't really go wrong with that. Then on February 13th I went to another somewhat local thrift store, which also never has anything. I bought one thing there, and that's my copy of Spyro 2, which is up there somewhere. It's right there. Can you see it? Can you see it? No? Okay. But they had some PS2 games this time. And everything in the store was half off, so I just picked up whatever they had. And of course some of them I had already, but once again, four games, a buck and a half for all of them. The operator No One Lives Forever, the platinum version of Gran Turismo 3 A-Spec, SSX3, which I actually thought I had, but for some reason I didn't. I see it all the time when going game hunting, but now I have it. And X-Squad. I know absolutely nothing about this. It was published by EA. Later that day I went to another local thrift store that specializes in stuff for children, you know, infants and such, so they don't really ever have any games, but I picked up this. Big ass Pikachu plushie. Look how cute it is. I paid a dollar and a half for this, so I guess I just couldn't resist. I'm not the world's biggest fan of Pikachu, but Seeing that this is like the old design, you, you know, the choppy design, it's all, it's very soft. On the 17th, I went to the local junkyard shop that I was telling you about in the previous video, and the first thing I saw was Uncharted 2 on the PS3, but no game. I ended up bringing this home for free, because there's no reason for them to have it on the shelf, and there's no game in it. So now I have the box and manual, in case I will ever come across a disc. A Disney Infinity figure. Jack Sparrow. 
on you. I don't really care much for these infinity figures. This is like this is actually my first one. So it's video game related, so I picked it up. Why do you ring? And we're back! So I have a real weakness for like big box PC games. I think you can see of them right some of them right there. Whenever I find one, I, I pretty much just pick it up if it's you know a reasonable price. Even sports titles such as UEFA UEFA Euro 2000, which is a soccer game. And Grand Prix 2! Which is a racing game. So for those two games and the figure, I paid about four and a half dollars. It's all right. So on the 24th, I went to another junkyard shop that's like a 20-minute drive away from here, and I found some Xbox games. I actually don't come across them too often. So Burnout Free Takedown, Freedom Fighters, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, Medal of Honor Rising Sun. And a bundle copy of Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Free. And it turned out that one of the discs in one of the games was stolen and that was The Godfather. So once again, I, got, I just took this home for free. Now I have the manual and box. Once again, if I ever find the disc. With the exception of the empty box I paid. One and a half dollars each. Which is good considering my normal two dollar spending limit on a game. Right next door to that shop, there's another like thrift store, and they only had one game. That's a pretty good one. Okami. Once again, one and a half dollars. Can't really complain there. Now we're getting to the last portion of the video. On February 28th, I actually had to help my mom set up a stand, you know, because she was going to be a vendor at a pretty big flea market. So this was the day before the actual flea market. So I, I pretty much have free range to go look at everything that people had. So I got first dibs. The first vendor had a lot of original Xbox games, but they wanted like $8 each, and that is way beyond my spending limit on a game. Unless it's something I really, 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 really want, and those really wasn't. There were one game that I wanted, badly actually. And I actually managed to talk them down to three dollars on it. Oddworld, Monster's Odyssey. I've been trying to collect the Oddworld games for a while. Once again, a British YouTuber we're talking about. Put down in the comments if you know who I'm talking about. It's gotta be one of you. So three dollars for Oddworld on Xbox? I still see that as a pretty good deal. And now it's time for this bag. Even more Game Boy stuff. So for this entire bag I paid about $25, there was an Atomic Purple Game Boy Color. Uh, finding these just means that I have to collect all of the different colors of you. Damn you! And yet another Tribal Edition Game Boy Advance SP, all taped together. You hear that? It's very loose. I almost, almost broke it trying to... And of course the charger for the SP. So with this lot, I'm going to save what I consider the best game for last. First up, we have a bootleg 34 in one game. <sighs> Kirby's Pinball Land. Tiny Toons Adventures 2. Another copy of Pokemon Red. Another copy of Super Mario Land. And Asterix and Obelix. The only game by color game that were there, Super Mario Bros. Deluxe. And then the Game Boy Advance games. Beyblade, G Revolution, Lego Bionicle, Spider-Man 2, Matchbox Crosstown Heroes, Animaniacs Light Camera Action. Hugo, Hugo Bukasun, I think. And Dr. Mario. And then the game I saved for last, Castlevania 2, Belmont's Revenge. I'm always looking for Castlevania games, and it's pretty fucking sweet to have one of the Game Boy ones now. And now to the very last thing I picked up this month. So I had to spend a little bit more than I usually would here, because this stuff feels a, a bit obscure and I just had to have it. See, this stand didn't really have any games, but they had one Game Boy game, a complete box copy 
of the rescue of Princess Blobette, which is the sequel to A Boy and His Blob. I've never heard of it, but I had to have it. See the other obscure thing that they had? A Commodore 16. See, I actually have a few Commodore 16 games already, but I didn't have a Commodore 16, so it was pretty much a no-brainer. I, I just had to have it. And of course it came with the cassette add-on, and it actually has a game in it. Vegas Jackpot. Now I can gamble on my Commodore 16. Get in there. I did it wrong. So that was everything I picked up in February. If you have any thoughts, feelings, whatever, put them down in the comments. Tell me what games you picked up lately. I'd love to know. And of course, like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Bye!